Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Our last break of the night, 2021 Panini Contenders Football Six Box Half Case. Pick your team number eight. A very big thank you to all of these wonderful people for getting in on the action. Thank you. On Tuesday the 15th, getting in to pick your team eight. If you've got a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that team in the uh, that prominence filler box that we were doing. An official last spot mojo went to EA and the Falcons, who picked up the Falcons before the rest of the teams were pulled for the filler. Remember, we quickly marked those with uh, X's right there, so we all know it's from the same case. We were in a stack right here, if you watch video seven. All right, good luck, everybody. Uh, who's who's in this break watching live? Craig, I know Craig Thomas is here. He's got the Niners. He was saying hitless on the Chargers and Niners in the first half. Maybe a nice trade Lance in the second half. Possibly. Maybe. I hope. That would be nice. Is he the, is he the deal? That is, is he going to be the real deal? Week one? Redmond's still here. <laughs> Edward, sadly, still here. Are you in... Okay, Riffer still has the Vikings. He's been looking, he's been chasing a Randy Moss autograph out of Contenders. So let's see if this break eight will help him out. Yeah, Redmond won the Dolphins. Maybe some, uh, some Smith? Waddle? That'd be nice. Yeah, speak it into existence. Ladies and gentlemen, speak speak your, your desired hits. Put it out there into the universe. And let's see what happens. Or don't. If you think it's a jinx, don't do it. Now, a possibility of points. Winner take all of the points if those are popped. Everyone, have, everyone has a chance at the points, too. There's a redemption right there. We got Chaz Surratt, rookie ticket autograph for Riffer and the Vikings. And the redemption is Caleb Farley. Not not Chris Farley, but Caleb Farley, who is obviously a Tennessee Titan. That's Mike Fagan with Tighten Up, Tennessee. At this point, Riffer would take a Kellen Mond Super Bowl ticket autograph. We got Braven Jordan, rookie ticket auto for Houston. Deshaun Watson on a big, big uh, free agent tour. Carolina's interested. Atlanta is interested. The Saints are interested. Browns are interested. There's rookie ticket autograph Kenneth Gainwell for the fly. Eagles fly. Ryan Redman won that team. And maybe a Devonta Smith too. It's got Eagles and Dolphins. Is there a uh, Ryan Redmond, is there a dual autograph of those guys? How awesome would that be? No randomizer. No one person happy, one person sad. Oh, there's, this, this guy makes me sad. Henry Ruggs. We got Jonathan Cooper, rookie ticket autograph. For my rivals, the Broncos, Michael Robinson. Jonathan Cooper. I guess there could be, right? All right, so that'll be a left-right randomizer. So we got our five autographs there. We'll do an autograph recap uh, at the end. Now, let me ask you a question for those of you. I'll bet they were in production long before all of that craziness. Um, 
So in 2019, well, no, in 2020, the Bengals went 4 11 and 1. And then in 2021, they went 10 and 7 and went to the Super Bowl. Who is that team going to be this season? Who's going to make that turnaround? So let's look at some like four win teams, right? Because I, what, what did I say? Bengals went four wins last season. Yeah, four, and, four 11 and one last season. So let's look at some four win teams. Maybe give or take a win. New York Jets, four and 13. Do they go to the Super Bowl? Texans went four and 13. Jaguars went three and 14. Do they go to the Super Bowl? Now, nah, Chargers won seven games, and they got Justin Herbert. We're talking long shots here. Four and 13 New York football giants. You know? Do, do they end up in the Super Bowl? Lions went three and 13. Is that Super Bowl? Carolina Panthers, five and 12. Ah, Craig saying just a non-playoff team. That's a whole other interesting question, but but I'm talking like, what about like those three to five win teams? Because did anyone really expect the Bengals to to do this? Even I mean, I mean, sure they added Jamar Chase, but there was a preseason where where people were making fun of Jamar Chase because he was like, oh, there's no stripes on this on the football, I can't see it. And then he went on to have an amazing season, award-winning season. So who is that team where you're like, holy crap, all it, all it needed was that one ex, one or two extra things and all of a sudden. Interesting. Brandon saying Texans and Jags. Craig saying Jags have a lot of upside. Redmond even likes what, what Davis Mills brought to the table. Oh, points. That'll be randomized to one person in the break. Winner take all on the points, like I said. That'd be interesting. Texans, Texans, Texans. 4-13. and 13. They're in division with the Titans, Colts, and Jaguars. Buffalo! Greg Rousseau and the Buffalo Bills. Ronbo and Buffalo. There you go, Ron. Yeah, Jaguars have done a lot of interesting things in free agency. I, I like Doug Peterson being the coach of that team, too. You know, and you get... So there's you don't have the S-show. Here's Dylan Stoner from my Raiders. You don't have the Urban Meyer S-show, which is from the... From the higher, it was just on the wrong foot. Then they lost Travis Etienne, who's supposed to be a big playmaker for them. You know, maybe you maybe you think Jamar Chase connected with Joe Burrow, Travis Etienne with Trevor Lawrence. What about the three three thirteen and one? Lions, Brandon suggesting. There's a Monroe St. Brown for the Lions. Thomas Ewald. Some cat team mojo. Brandon saying Lions have had a lot of close games throughout the throughout the season. All right, they've got a pretty pretty intense coach. Here's rookie of the year contenders, Travis Etienne, 99. Brandon saying they lost a lot of close games. If those games turned into wins. There's Divine Diablo, who had a nice rookie season. Raiders need to keep need to keep adding to that defense, but he's been a nice bright spot to the Raiders defense. Peter with the Raiders. Alright, so that's one, two, three, just four autos, that's it? I think we got shorted an auto in this one with the points. Or no, Greg Rousseau was an auto, right? 
All right, well, the points takes takes the place of it on it. All right, I'm looking at the Lions schedule right now. That week one Niners game, they actually could have, they actually kind of came back and almost won that. The Niners almost gave that game away. So if they started a little bit better, rookie head coach, first time head coach, I think. So maybe you can chalk it up to that, but that could have been a W. They got beaten by Green Bay pretty handily. They only lost by two to Baltimore. That's a one score game right there. So that could have been two wins. 1917 to the Minnesota Vikings, another one score game. That's three wins. No, that's not close. That wasn't close. That wasn't close. There was a tie with the Steelers, 16 16. That could have been four wins. And they lost by a field goal to Cleveland. That could have been five wins. Lost by two to Chicago. That could have been six wins. Lost by two to Minnesota. That's seven wins. That wasn't close. That wasn't close. Lost by four to the Falcons. That could have been eight wins. No, that game wasn't close. And they lost by seven to Green Bay in the last week of the season. So, so yeah, that's that could have been if they got one extra score or one less score from the opponent here and there. That could have been seven or eight wins. Yeah, Redmond, you're right. Yeah, I'm just glancing through the through, through their schedule here. They could have been a seven or eight win team. So if some luck turns around for the Lions, you know, if uh, some luck turns around for them, if they have a good free agency window, I don't know who they added, but if they have, if they have a good draft, if Jared Goff has a solid season. There's Elijah Vera Tucker for the Jets. Dun, 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 dun. Nicholas with that one. It doesn't happen every year, but every once in a while you will see. There's Michael Vick, legendary contenders to 99 for EA. But every once in a while you'll see that like four-win team the year before turns into a playoff team the next year. There's Keith Taylor, playoff ticket autograph, 60 out of 99. I guess the Lions could be a good candidate for that kind of turnaround. Um, Keith Taylor, Panthers, that's going to be Leo with Carolina. We got a Elijah Molden. Tennessee Titans, that'll be for Mike. I'm listening to uh, Nance and Romo in the background. Isn't it kind of crazy to think that, uh, that Troy Aikman and Joe Buck will be at ESPN? They're going to do Monday Night Football. There's Kadarius Tony, nice one. Draft class, 5 out of 21. Draft class autograph for Greg and the New York Football Giants. He could be a nice weapon next year. And then Al, Al Michaels, uh, I don't think has been re-signed for Sunday Night Football. So Al Michaels may do Thursday Night Football. If, I mean, Amazon may back up the Brinks truck for Al Michaels. I don't think he's made a decision yet, but he may be, they may back up the Brinks truck to get Al Michaels over there. And we got Kyle Pitts. There you go. Rookie playoff ticket RPS. EA, last spot mojo, strikes again. Falcons chasing Deshaun Watson. Oh yeah, that that's what I figured too, because I know Joe Davis has done a lot of work for Fox Sports, like especially in college football. So I figured that he would uh, that he would take over some of the. Will he be take over main duties? Is he? Will he be the Joe Buck of Fox Sports? Does that mean we lose him for more Dodger games? 
Although back in the early 80s, Vin Scully did Dodgers home games and football too. Hmm, maybe that's why the Dodgers expanded their broadcasting staff. I want to say Jessica Mendoza, Dontrell Willis, and a couple other names are joining the, broad the Dodgers broadcast staff you know, as like analysts and color commentators. So Joe Davis will have the big Fox games on Sundays then. Is he is is Joe Davis doing the World Series too? Could be interesting if Joe da is Joe Davis doing World Series for Fox. And if like the Dodgers make it. There'll be a lot of cries of bias during that broadcast, I'm sure. And then we'll, I guess I guess Fox will have to figure out who like the color commentator will be. Joe Buck paired with I don't know what 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 former athletes are on the Fox Fox football roster. There's Leighton Vander Esch, Inc. Eighty one out of ninety nine. I kind of like that. I kind of like that font right there. That design looks really sharp. Dallas. That's gonna be for EA and the boys. And a, a second Zach Wilson. There was one in the first half, too. Second half Zach Wilson. 10 out of 10. This one's for Nicholas Lalee. And the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. Dun, 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 dun. And we got Diami Brown, Washington. Brandon with the Commanders. Won that spot in the filler. Won that spot with an extra spot. And that's five out of 99 round numbers. So that'll be a separate randomizer. We'll do Broncos, Jets randomizer there. And there's Hamsa Nasser Leiden. Cyrildin. Nasserildin. That is for the Jets, Nicholas. Dun, 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 dun. And then we've got Grant Stewart. Tampa Bay. It's Mike with the Buccaneers. All right, that was a nice box. Two more to go. Thank you and good luck, everybody. Appreciate everybody digging deep to knock this break out. Do the Bills get? I'm uh, the, the NFL Network's replaying this uh, Buccaneers, this Bills Buccaneers game. Do the Bills get over the hump? I'd like for them to get over the hump. Be hashtag good for the hobby, right? We got Patrick Mahomes. Went to I mean he went to a couple Super Bowls and and won it and won one. Josh Allen could use a Super Bowl appearance. Joe Burrow made a Super Bowl appearance. It'd be nice to follow those like top tier quarterbacks in the last few years. Just 
Just kind of rotate around. Go get get some Super Bowls. Let's get uh let's get Lamar Jackson into Super into Super Bowl. Let's have Mahomes win another one. Let's have Burrow win one more, or go to one more and win one. We got another Chaz Surratt, rookie ticket autograph for Riffer. Bengals may not need to do a lot. I think I think their biggest issue was the offensive line, and I think, I think it was Chad Daw who was reminding me that they, they had started to address those issues already. They have a good free agency, a good draft. Just keep continue to freshen up the squad, add some pieces. There's Panay Sewell for the Lions. You know, then 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 uh you know, the Bengals could be right back in it, right? Steelers are still working on a QB, right? They got Trubisky. That's TBD on him. I guess Cleveland Browns are trying to get, that's a kind of a tough division. If the Browns get Deshaun Watson, you know, if, and then retool that offense there, improve their defense. If the Ravens stay healthy and Lamar Jackson's back to his form, there's a nice Elijah Mitchell. It was a nice pickup for my fantasy team, Craig Thomas. That goes to the Niners. Maybe we'll find the guy that hands him off the ball. Hands the ball off to him. Right, the AFC West loaded with QBs now. Now, now I've got to deal with Russell Wilson twice a year, Patrick Mahomes twice a year, Justin Herbert twice a year. Here's Rondale Moore, on-card autograph for Ryan, who won that spot. Cardinals. So I'll be interested, interested to see what the Raiders are going to do. I know they want to get... They want to improve that offensive line. That's key. Definitely want to do that. They want to get a wide receiver that can kind of stretch out the field a little bit. The rugs replacement. Um, but their other pass catches are pretty good. They may add some pieces in the draft. They really need to get that defense improved a lot last year, but it needs to keep getting better if they're going to face those QBs twice a year. Maybe maybe a little uh, little running back help to keep Josh Jacobs fresh throughout the season. Could use a little bit more there. 87 out of 99 playoff ticket, but the Raiders offense is pretty good. What they were terrible at... Um, is what everyone needs, what every team needs, red zone efficiency. I think when, uh, I think a lot of, if you're in the sort of gambling world, yards per play, you know, and, uh, and red zone efficiency becomes like really, uh, really good buzzwords if you're handicapping like one football team to another. I'll look it up at some. We'll we'll talk football all, all year long, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll 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 break down those numbers. But just off the top of my head, I want to say that the Raiders' conversion rate was just near the bottom of the league. I want to say it was. I, I don't even know what league average would be for red zone conversions, but I think it's it was bad. I want to say it was like. 15, 20% of red zone like attempts, like in the red zone converted into touchdowns. It was bad. It was not good. Maybe even worse than that. Right? So they just, they got to the red zone a decent amount of times. I think that was the other bad thing was that they got to the red zone a decent amount of times, but they, a lot of times they left, left points on the board, turned it over, settled for field goals. So if they can, if they and Josh McDaniels apparently, apparently the Patriots last year had some of the best red zone, you know, red zone efficiency, you know, a lot of touchdowns converted in the red zone. Their percentage was very high, amongst the highest in the league. So if the Raiders can, I don't know how often they got in there, but when they were in there, they scored. Um, so if the Raiders can definitely can change that with. Sort of more creative Josh McDaniels 
play calling. That would be pretty awesome. Puts less strain on the defense because they're scoring points and allows that sort of young, sort of incomplete defense sort of, sort of, uh, you know, let, puts less pressure on them, lets them just kind of evolve and develop. Raiders maybe add more defense and free agency. And in the draft, there's Richie Grant. And then they'll be able to hang tough with the with that AFC West. I'll bet, I'll bet uh, broadcasters are are, are going to stumble over themselves. I think. To, uh, to see, hey, we want to televise as many of those AFC West divisional matchups as possible. So I think, I think as, a, as a fan, or I guess all the fans in the AFC West should be happy because they're going to see a lot of games, I think, on national television. Another Falcon for uh, EA. Uh, Frank Darby, 77 out of 99. Last spot mojo. I have not, Oliver, I have not checked out winning time on HBO. Remember how it's actually the book that it's based on is actually Showtime, but it can't be Showtime on HBO. That'd be weird. So I had to, had to change to Winning Time. I have not. Um, I hear that it's good, but very sensationalized, and that Lakers fans will be just interested. I mean, I think any basketball fan will ha will enjoy watching it. But apparently, there are uh, there's Trayvon Morrick speaking of the Raiders. Peter, but apparently Lakers uh, owners and staff are apparently not happy with it. I think they say that 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 a lot of characters are exaggerated. Um, but you know, within the realm of of creative liberty, but apparently. Um, apparently they really mischaracterized Jerry West. Like, it was way over the top. More so than any of the other characters. There's Jacob Harris for the Rams. That's for Sean Maddock. But I, I, I don't mind, I mean, for, for the sake of the audience, we won't do spoilers, but I personally don't mind spoilers, so I, I, I kind of know some... Some of the key, like, whoa, things that happened there. So they don't pull punches. Adam McKay, who's a pretty good good director, so. Did we only get, or was that Jesper? Was this the first autograph? Anyway, on average, that's what they say. All right, let's do some randomizers. And then I'll do another quick recap. That's that, folks. That's the break. Appreciate you hanging with me throughout this break. All right, so let's grab some new dice. First, we'll do the left-right randomizer. But yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to catch, uh, I think there's two episodes out, right, Oliver? I think I'll catch those this weekend. Or my weekend, Friday, Saturday. All right, then we got Denver, New York Jets. And then everybody has a shot at the points. Now, I don't think this was a promo break, right? Yeah, it's just a regular break? Yeah, just a regular break. All right, let's roll it. Randomized names and teams, five and a four. Names, teams, five and a four for all three dice rolls. Sorry. Late at night, folks, losing my mind. Nine times for each list, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ninth and final time. After nine, left side will get him. I think left side got him last time. So left side cards will get these uh, two-player cards right here. That one was numbered, so knocking over my stamps here. Last one was, uh, that one was numbered, so we're going to do that separately. Five and a four, nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ninth and final time. After nine, New York Jets will get them. So the Jets will get this card right here. That's five out of 99. And then 600 points. Everyone has a shot at that. Five and a four, nine times. Name on top gets it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ninth and final time. 
So after nine, 600 points for Michael Robinson. There you go, Michael. With the spot that you won. I don't know if I called your number too often in the break, but you got 600 points going your way as well. Here's a quick re recap. Yeah, Rifford pointing out Zach Wilson, the only rookie QB the entire case. Yeah, there's, there's one of them. We had, we had one more. We had a different one in the first half. There's Kyle Pitts, Kadarius Tony, Some nice names here, but yeah. Could have used a couple more quarterback names here. It's Caleb Farley and Chaz Surratt. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.